What's up YouTube, it's the Chosen Aquatics. And today we're gonna to do a quick little tour of all the tanks, check out how everything's doing, kind of tap in with you guys, let you guys know what's going on. And we're gonna take a look at another room in the house and we're gonna talk about some possible plans on what we're gonna do in that room. So you guys can let us know what you think. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and check out these tanks. All right guys, first tank we're gonna look at in today's video, it's gonna be the 40 gallon reef tank which is still chilling and doing its thing. Uh, all the fish are still alive and happy. So you guys know if you've been around the channel, that's really all we strive for here at the Chosen Aquatics. But not only the fish, but the corals are also doing their thing in this tank. And this tank is mostly softy dominated with a few LPS here and there. Pretty much all around easy to care for coral, also easy to care for fish. But with that being said, this is still my pride and joy in one of my favorite aquariums. So if you're new to the channel and this is the first video of ours you guys are seeing, we have two clownfish in here. Their names are Penelope and Dracaris. We also have two pajama cardinal fish in here and a six line wrasse with a slew of invertebrates for our cleanup crew. There's the six line wrasse up front saying hello to the camera. So this tank, um, as some of you will know, has been up and running for a little over a year now and uh, very well established. Everything seems to be getting along just fine. We hadn't added any new coral in a while or any new fish for that matter. So everything's kind of been maintaining and just existing, but I'm starting to get the itch possibly pick up some more coral here soon and uh, get this tank a little more full than it already is. But the overall health of this aquarium, I couldn't be happier. Um, all of this coralline algae that you see on the glass, let me know in the comments what you guys do. Do you scrape it off or do you leave it? Because for a long time, it was extremely desir desirable to me and it was to the point where I actually seeded this aquarium with coralline algae because I wanted it. And uh, I still enjoy it, I'm still liking it, but it's really starting to take over. As you can see, it's covering that back there and then all around the tank, there's coralline algae spores everywhere. And uh, it doesn't really bother me, but I understand that everything gets to a point where you may have to make a change and this may be starting to get a little excessive. I know some people get it off a lot sooner than when it gets to this point, but to me it's fine. But let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think the tank will look better without it or leave it? Whatever. And then we'll go from there. My two favorite corals, which are my toadstools up front here. I've had this guy since he was about the size of a quarter. And he's literally a little bit larger than my fist now. This guy wasn't much bigger than the size of a quarter when I got him, and he's almost the size of my fist. And you have this baby guy up front here, which is finally starting to put some size on. That pulse and Xena was a small frag when I first got it, which this coral's not hard to grow at all, and a lot of people know that. Some people even consider that coral as a nuisance coral because it grows so rapidly, and it definitely has the capability to take over your aquarium but i enjoy it so i'm not going to fool with it the massive colony of zoas up top this gorgonian was probably a fifth of that size when i got it so as you can see it's really taking off and filling out and going to be beautiful as the years go by and it continues to grow we have a couple of really nice size colonies of GSP, one here up front, which has completely took over this rock. Now, granted, when I bought this, uh, this was a small frag plug that had a few strands on it. So you can see this went absolutely crazy. And then we had this colony here up top, which our anemone crab is actually hosting right now, up there straight chilling. Um, this is the first tank, not the only tank, so we're going to go ahead and 
switch on over to another aquarium, let you guys see how that one's doing. But uh, let us know in the comments what you think about the 40 gallon reef tank. Boom, here we are. The 75 gallon Oscar tank, which originally you may remember was a peacock African cichlid tank that we transformed and made a video that's on the channel now. Go check it out. It's titled 75 gallon aquarium makeover where we completely transformed this tank into a Oscar tank and we actually dirted the bottom of it and that's because eventually we expect um, start the Oscar to grow out of this aquarium and when he does it will be transformed into a planted community tank so we wanted to go ahead and get that layer of soil and that thick sand bed in there to age over time as a, as start grows up and when he gets ready for his bigger tank we'll throw him in the bigger tank and then we'll have this tank already established cycled with the proper sand bed and soil bed in it so we can just plant the crap out of it and slam it in there and make it a very nice community tank. Something similar to the community planted tank that you guys will see here in just a minute. And if this tank has a weird appearance to you, maybe a little yellowish tint to the water, that's completely normal. That's coming from this driftwood decor that I have in the center. And what it's doing is it's leaching tannins into the water column, allowing the water to have that yellowish tint this water is completely crystal clear, completely healthy water. And honestly, the the, uh, the tannings in the water is completely healthy to the fish. It's not going to affect him in any way. And a lot of people believe that it's actually beneficial to have this brown water. But me personally, it's not the way I like my tanks to look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to do some water changes and see if I can't get ahead of the tanning process because eventually it will equal out and stabilize out and it will not forever make your water have that tint but if you've seen the video or you plan on going to watch the video on the makeover you'll know that we planted one of the hang on the backs and uh, this plant's actually doing really good we actually have some new growth here coming up out of the center so i'm very excited about that all the leaves seem to be healthy and it's still alive so I completely expected some time for, you know, the plant was raised and was living in dirt. So there is a transition period where it has to get used to being an aquatic plant. So I think we're still kind of in the middle of that now. So it is what it is, but it does encourage me when I see stuff like this, some brand new growth coming out of the center of the plant. So that's how I know it's nice and healthy. But start the Oscar has put on some considerable size since the last time you guys on YouTube have seen him. He's growing fast. Hopefully he continues to grow fast and outgrows this tank and ends up getting his new tank. But right now we're enjoying him here in the 75 gallon Oscar tank. So we're going to go ahead and check out a few steps behind me. The newest aquarium here at the Chosen Aquatics which is the 10 gallon beta tank. This is a half moon beta and we set up this aquarium um, probably seven to ten days ago and uh, this tank's doing awesome. So basically real simple aquascape, just a few river rock. We have the driftwood here, have the moss wrapped around it. First time we ever done that. We have a video setting this tank up. Go give that a watch. We also dirted this aquarium as well, even though there's not any stem plants or any plants planted into the substrate, that doesn't mean there's not going to be. So we have some plants on the way. We got a lot of things in, in mind for this tank. We wanted to go ahead and dirt that substrate layer so we were ready to go when we had our plants. But as of right now, all we have is the moss on the driftwood and we added some of the floaters out of the 75 gallon planted tank which I know has added a lot of nice biodiversity inside of this brand new system, which is helping this tank along and uh, helping Fred, the beta, beta, however you want to pronounce it, be happy and healthy. So go check this video out. Go check the video out on the 75 gallon. They're both really cool videos and we had a lot of fun 
remaking the 75 gallon and setting this 10 gallon up. So tell us what you think in the comments about both of these tanks. We would love to hear you guys' feedback. And what do you think of Fred? I think Fred's beautiful. Beta fish have given me a hard time in the past trying to keep them. I've kept a lot of fish. And uh, for some reason, I've just not had any luck with beta fish. So I'm hoping that uh, Fred's with us for a very long time and we can continue to provide him with a healthy and happy life. So now we're going to go check out one of my favorite aquariums, which is just a few steps behind me as well. All right, guys, this is the 10 gallon planted shrimp tank. And this tank has been with me for a good while as well. And if you're catching on to the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? If you're catching on to the recurring theme in these videos is that all my freshwater aquariums are going to be set up dirted. And that's how I'm going to set up all of my freshwater aquariums going forward because I plan on planting all of them. And obviously, as you can see, it's extremely beneficial to do so. And all the video, uh, all the tanks that you guys are seeing in this video have separate videos of their own on the YouTube channel that um, they show like this tank, for example, we did a complete rescape of this tank not long ago. We got a video of it out on YouTube. And then we noticed that we had some pregnant shrimp in this tank as well. And we did a video of that and put it on the YouTube channel. So go check those videos out. They're really cool and we would love for you guys to see them. But we have three inler guppies in here and then everything else is shrimp. And we also have some snails. But this tank, is one of my favorite tanks because this tank takes the absolute least amount of work. This aquarium, not one time has ever had a water change. Isn't that amazing? Obviously it is uh, extremely planted. We have a lot of floaters in here and this tank is really, really, really truthfully taking care of itself. All I do is, I've said it in previous videos, I fill this pitcher up with water and then I take this hose and create a siphon effect and I siphon uh, top off water into the aquarium to top off the water level. But other than that, absolutely zero maintenance. And it runs off of the plants and that small sponge filter there in the back. And it's honestly probably one of the healthiest systems I have out of all my aquariums. So very, very cool. And on the channel, we try to show people how you can set up aquariums that do not take a lot of work and that will generally take care of themselves. And that's exactly what we have here. So if you like the way this tank looks, please consider checking out some of the other videos on the channel that are revolved around this tank because they are pretty cool. And it will kind of let you get a little bit of backstory into the tank and where it's come from and how it is what it is now. All right, guys, this is the first time this room has been seen on the channel. And this is the man cave slash collector's room. And the plans with this room have changed many different times. Here's one of the uh, 75 tiles that I do plan up on, on setting up in this room. Regardless, it will be in here. But real quick. I have this wall here and either I can put a TV on this wall and a couch in here, or I can turn this wall into a bunch of tens and 20 gallons and do a bunch of different cool systems in here and have a nice little fish room and uh, be able to make a lot of content, like do a lot of different things in here. So you guys let me know for the man cave slash hangout room with all the collectibles. If you would do just the 75 in here, which this is probably gonna be a discus tank, TV and couch, or would you do the discus tank and then the wall of the smaller 10 and 20 gallon tanks like on a custom rack? We can make videos on building the rack and things like that. And we can do a bunch of different things in here. So you guys let me know what you think in the comments. And now we're gonna go ahead and check out the 75 gallon planted tank. All right, guys, without further ado, here she is. This is the 75 gallon planted community tank, which I believe to be one of the channel's favorite tanks that we have so far. 
This tank is one of my favorite tanks, if not my favorite tank. And I believe if you look at it long enough, it's not hard to tell why. This tank is extremely active, extremely healthy, and beautiful to look at due to all the vegetation. So as you can see, this plant is, this plant, yeah, it might as well be a plant. This tank is extremely planted, and there's a lot more plants coming its way. Hopefully, if I have it my way, you won't be able to see a, a single spot anywhere in this aquarium you couldn't put a plant just because I love the jungle vibe of this tank. I love the way it looks and I believe it would look better with even more plants. So stocking, um, we have some German blue rams in here, which is my favorite freshwater fish of all time. We also have some angel fish. And I guess you could say these, these two sets of fish are the fish that stand out the most in this aquarium. Um, and then we also have a lot of tetras. So we have black skirt tetras, white skirt tetras, neon tetras. We also have some red eyed tetras. We have some zebra danios. We have a pretty cool Pictus catfish. There's some Cory cats in here. We have Dalmatian um, mollies. We have a platy in here. So as you can see, it's a plethora of different fish in here there's probably roughly 30 all together give or take a Siamese algae eater who is starting to put some size on um this is also a dirty tank so like I said all my freshwater aquariums are gonna be dirty aquariums that uh take very little to no maintenance to maintain so tell us guys what you think in the comments about this tank and before we continue to talk about this one, we'll talk about this tank below it. This is a tank that is full of African cichlid peacock fry that we are growing out until we can get them to an appropriate size to trade them in at our LFS just because we don't plan on housing and homing them their entire lives. But we have had them ever since I stripped the mother. All these fish were in the mother fish's mouth and I had to strip the babies over and I got them into a uh, tank on their own and uh, we've been growing them out ever since so they're starting to get to the size where we can do something with them and that's what we're looking forward to because hopefully somebody can provide them with a better life than what we can right now because we don't plan on setting up a large peacock uh, display again but I did want to show you guys this tank. It's not planted because the fish will destroy it, but we do keep floaters in here to help us with the nitrates. But like I said earlier, I believe this is one of the channel's favorite aquariums, and I can't say I blame them. This tank is absolutely a treat to look at. It's a treat to have, and hopefully it continuously evolves into something more beautiful over time. Completely sustainable almost untouched ecosystem inside of there that does not need me fooling with it whatsoever because nature is completely doing her thing inside of there. Every once in a while we got to get rid of some of these floaters just because they completely canopy the tank and shade everybody out but that's okay because the benefits of having them far outweigh the uh, cons of having them. They do a really good job at nitro nitrate exportation so guys please consider looking into floating plants and uh, understand and learn what they do and how they benefit an aquarium but I think this video is starting to get kind of long if this is the the first video of ours that you've stumbled across on YouTube and you thought it was pretty cool or maybe you liked a tank or two that you saw or maybe you only like one tank or maybe you like none of the tanks uh, we would love to hear your feedback in the comment section. But if you did enjoy anything you saw, please consider checking out the YouTube channel because we post fish-related content weekly. It's one of our greatest passions. We love keeping these aquariums, and we love making videos to share with you guys. So check out the YouTube channel, and if you like what you see, consider joining the Chosen Aquatics family because we would love to have you. But nonetheless, we're going to go ahead and cut this video here. We're the Chosen Aquatics, and we hope we get to see you guys in the next one.